Dropping off ledges on your mountain bike can be scary, but what if you could learn the technique on flat ground? There's a basic skill that we can focus on, which is easy to practice and works on just about any kind of drop. I've also got a super fun way to practice this skill in your neighborhood, so you can work on building your control and confidence even when you're not out on the trail. My name is Aaron, welcome to Super Rider. On this channel, we break down complex bike skills into easy to learn techniques so you can quickly apply it to your riding. To prepare for today's practice, I highly recommend locking out your suspension as much as possible. Once we get the basics locked in and we're feeling comfortable, it's fine to add the suspension back in, but I find it easiest to simplify your bike setup anytime you're learning a new skill. I also recommend dropping the seat down and out of the way. I use flat pedals for my practice, but it's up to you what you want to use, whichever is the most comfortable. Lastly, you want to make sure your hands are as wide on the bar as possible with just one finger on the brake lever. This gives us maximum control over the handlebars and the brakes, which is going to be important today. With our bike setup locked in, it's time to dig into the basic technique that you're going to use on drops. When we come up to any sort of drop, we're likely carrying a little momentum. Using today's skill is going to take advantage of that momentum and set you up for smooth, confident drops. Let me break down the drop into three parts, and then we can work on each element to completely master it, and then we'll pull it all together at the end. As you roll toward a drop, you're going to shift your weight back on the bike to unweight your front wheel. This lifts it up and prepares you for the next phase of the technique. The next thing we need to do with our front wheels slightly off the ground is to roll a full wheelbase, so our back wheel rolls to where our front wheel lifted off. Lastly, we're going to lean our bike forward to match the angle of the landing so that we land both tires at the same time. If you can do the first two parts of this technique with good control, the third part comes along easily. So let's focus on a flat ground drill that can help us out. To lift up the front wheel, remember that we need to get our body weight behind the bottom bracket of the bike. The front wheel comes up when you make it light, not when you yank on the handlebars. Use your hips to shift your weight to the back of the bike and do a small rolling motion with your arms to guide the front wheel up. Let's just practice rolling along and getting the front wheel off the ground to start. Next, we're going to do a drill called wheelbase, which means that we need to get our front wheel to stay off the ground as we coast for the length of a full bike wheelbase. Find a line on the ground and as you roll up to it, unweight the front wheel and hold it up until your back wheel crosses the line. The slower you go, the harder it is to roll a wheelbase on the back wheel, but that's a good thing to practice. Try sinking your body down over the back wheel and see how that affects your ability to keep the front wheel in the air. If you want to take this up a level, see if you can hold the front wheel up for more than a bike length. This gives you more time in that balance zone, which is great for building confidence. Before we start applying this skill to actual drops, if this style of mountain bike tutorial is helpful for you, it would mean a lot to me if you supported this channel by subscribing. We've got a full summer of outdoor tutorials coming your way, and I want to make sure that you see them all. Once you've got a good feel for the wheelbase drill, let's try the skill on a small ledge. Curbs are awesome for this, as they're super low consequence, and even if your front wheel drops early, you'll be able to ride out of it. One thing we absolutely need to talk about when it comes to doing mountain bike drops is what we're doing with our brakes, or more importantly, what we're not doing with our brakes. When I ride, I usually have one finger over each brake and my hands as wide on the bars as possible so I have maximum control and confidence over the bike. But once you lift your front wheel off the ground for a drop, the last thing you would ever want to do is touch that back brake. And the reason for that is that when you touch your back brake, it immediately drops your front wheel down. And if your front wheel is already out over the edge, it can drop your wheel down a lot steeper and put your body weight super far forward on the bike to put you in what we call lawn dart position. Lawn dart position means that you're over the handlebars and you're going to land front wheel first and then flip over the bars. And we absolutely don't want to do that. So if at all possible, as you're riding off the drop, if you need to adjust your body on the bike, don't use the back brake to do it. Best case scenario, you can adjust it in the air, but the last thing you want to do is touch that back brake as you're going off the ledge. As you get more control over this movement, you can slowly build up higher and higher. One way I like to practice this movement is to find curb cuts in my neighborhood, and I ride them at different speeds to get a better feel for the bike. Dropping off a curb cut can also allow you to readjust your position on the bike to practice landing two tires at the same time. You know, the best part about making these videos for you is that I get to practice some of the stuff that I want to work on too. Not only are we working on dropping off, but I can also practice riding up onto obstacles. 
It's kind of a double whammy. This is perfect. One other thing to remember, unless you're competing in Red Bull Rampage, you don't get points for extra huge drops. So before you push your limits, make sure that you've got all your fundamentals completely locked in. The biggest mistake I see riders making on drops is that they feel the need to bunny hop off the ledge in order to clear it. In most cases, this actually sends people out of control. I think it's better to roll directly off the ledge like we've been practicing. It's precise and easy to control. Remember that as you get more confident, you can start to add your suspension back into the equation. You should have a great feel for this technique, and now you just need to adjust to the movement of the suspension, which should be relatively easy at this point. There is one other way to do drops, and I made a video about that style too. Check it out right here and see which one is the best for you.